Hi, uh, I'm Art Bergeron and uh, welcome back to the series of seminars that I do regarding uh, seniors. If you haven't uh, watched one of these presentations before, I'm an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. There are 70 of us at Myrick O'Connell, which is, means I get, I'm lucky I get, we all get to do what we want. I really like doing elder law. Uh, and I do this series of presentations to deal with elder law issues and sometimes, as in this one, to put those issues in the context of like the totality of your life. So today, we're talking about living with memory loss. Uh, I talk to people a lot about the implications of um, living with memory loss in terms of the programs that they may be eligible for and qualifying for the, them for those programs. We all, I talk a lot about mass health. But I want to talk about today, uh, I want to talk about that, but also in the kind of broader context of what are the issues that you really need to be thinking about if, you have, if you're having, experiencing some issues. And I'm going to talk about Frank and Mary, my good friends who um, I always talk about them and their kids, um, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And, and Frank and Mary's goal in life is very simple. They want to live in their house until they die, be buried in the backyard. The kids are all grown up now. Um, and, and that's their goal. And so the, and the, and in, in this example, they own a house. It's worth about $400,000. Uh, for those of you who are watching who are in Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard, obviously like add a one to that, so it's close to a million one. But the point is they've got a house. They've got some savings, but not a lot, of a couple hundred thousand dollars. Uh, Frank's got an IRA of 300,000, so they have total assets of about uh, $900,000. Uh, they've been living fine. They've got their house, their mortgage is paid. They've got, so they're just earning social security, a couple thousand, three thousand dollars a month. Um, and once again, their goal is simply to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. But the question is, what happens if, um, Mary starts having problems just remembering things. And you kind of, and Frank is noticing it, but you know, she, she's around the house, she's repeating more. Um, it, it's, it's clear that she's, just, she's developing more issues. Um, and the question is, what should that initial response be? Now I'm often at the very end of all of this when it's an emergency and oh my god you know what you know what are we going to do does mary need to go to a nursing home you know frank's a mess everything's a mess right but right now in this in for purposes of this presentation this is just beginning and this is the usual response the usual response is for frank and mary to both say and for their neighbors or their friends or their family say oh well you know this is really nothing it's just kind of old age and you know mary doesn't remember as well and everybody just kind of lets it go. And that's a possible response. And I saw that response. Uh, I, I started uh, doing elder law after my mother died in a nursing home in 1991. She had been at home with my dad um, for several years before that, experiencing increasingly severe um, dementia symptoms. But, and by the way, back then, uh, I don't even think we talked about Alzheimer's. I don't think Alzheimer's was kind of in the dialogue. You know, you talked about people getting hardening of the arteries and, you know, these little things. And, but so they didn't, just didn't kind of talk about what possible things they could do, except that my mother kept getting quieter and quieter and staying home more and more often because she didn't want to be out and she didn't want to be embarrassed talking to other people. And my father, who was, was being very protective, and, but got more and more frustrated with the fact, well, you know, why can't Irene, my mother's name was Irene, um, why can't she, how can't she remember things? And you know, well, one of the issues is they didn't really kind of reach out to talk to, they were afraid to reach out to talk to anybody. So the, the, the first thing that you need to do if you're having these issues is you want to really check it out. You know, it may be that there's nothing to them. It may be that professionals will tell you, like your doctor um, uh, or a neurologist, your doctor may suggest that you talk to a neurologist. Um, or if you just want to be, even before that, you just want to call somebody and you want to call the Alzheimer's Association, which has a national hotline, um, which is there for emergencies, but also for these kinds of conversations. You know, you just want to be learning about uh, perhaps Alzheimer's or other diseases that cause memory loss. Maybe you just want to be talking about it so that you can get a handle on whether there may be an issue, maybe there's not an issue, maybe, maybe this is something that you just need to be kind of checking in, you know, as, as things go on. Think of it as 
you know, you found out that you got a high cholesterol level, you got high blood pressure or whatever, and now you got to start paying attention to it. And you just, and you, so you just kind of want to, you want to know. So you want to talk to these, to these professionals. Um, and, and by the way, you need to bring it up with your doctor. Don't expect your doctor to bring it up with you because doctors, you know, primary care physicians, your doctor, deals with these kinds of conversations all the time and a lot of time hates them because in many of these conversations he's almost uncomfortable bringing it up because he knows that most of his patients don't want to hear about this. They do not want to even be thinking that they've got memory loss and so they'll try to hide it and they'll come in, they, oh no, everything is, everything is fine, how are things at home, oh everything's great. They won't even bring it up with the doctor. And so the doctor doesn't have a chance to really kind of have a conversation with you about that stuff. So, you know, one of the nice things about, <clears throat> well, one of the nice things about memory loss, that's kind of a, that seems like a, a kind of a, 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 a non sequitur, but um, one of the nice things about memory loss is that it happens over time. I mean, the bad part about this is that you people have to be dealing with it over a long period of time, but the good thing is that unless you let it get out of hand, it's not a crisis. So, so talk to, talk to those professionals, then take a breath. Just take a breath. So the doctor says, or your neurologist says, yeah, you've got some memory loss problems. This is where things may be going. You know, it's not cancer, right? You're not, you're not about to have to go through chemo and all this other stuff and, and operations and, and it's not back pain. I often tell my clients, if I had a choice between living with a bad back and living with a bad memory, I'll take a bad memory, right? It's not COVID. You know, you're not about, you're not about to just die over, over this. So, so it is what it is. <clears throat> and then you've got time to figure out a plan and to figure out how, for Frank and Mary's perspective, you can, you can do what you've said you want to do. You want to live in your house until you die. You want to be buried in the backyard. So how's that going to work out if Mary has memory problems? So uh, the next thing you want to do, or, or in order to do that, in order to figure out your plan, you need to figure out the people who can figure out that plan with you. And those people are out there. There are people who are regularly dealing with the literally tens of millions of people in America who are experiencing memory loss and are in some, want some stage of experiencing memory loss. So first and foremost, go to your senior center. Go to your senior center. Trust me, you're not the only one who has asked this question to the folks at the senior center. They can be the, the kind of the gateway through which you can find professionals that are in your area um, or, uh, and programs that are in your area. You may be able to find support groups. So you really want to talk to your senior center. Either before or after you do that, because this is if you if, it, if, if that's the first call you make, one of their suggestions is going to be call the aging services access point in your area, which in, in, on, the, on, the, uh, on Martha's Vineyard in Nantucket, uh, where I spent a lot of time, um, uh, is the local representative of elder services of Cape Cod and the islands. Uh, in the Marlboro, Hudson, Northboro area um, where I live uh, and around which I do a lot of work, uh, it, it has been Bay Path Elder Services. Bay Path Elder Services just merge with, it, with a, a larger um, aging services access point or ASAP called Springwell, uh, but they still have offices right here in Marlboro. You can call them, you can stop by to just talk to them about what the resources are that might be available. Finally, and this, I, this, is, a, I have a strong, this is a strong recommendation of mine, uh, if, you, if you're experiencing memory loss issues, go talk to a, geri a geriatric care manager. Now, geriatric care managers, many still call themselves geriatric care managers. Others call themselves aging care, aging life care professionals. Um, there's been this whole question about branding. What the point is, what these folks do, they are typically social workers or nurses or both, or larger organizations that have both, um, who are composed of people who really like working with seniors, uh, and so they have a professional background, and their point in life is to help you figure out all of this stuff. Um, th so they're going to know all of the home care agencies that can provi get, provide some additional care for you at home if you want it. 
They're going to know a lot of these other professionals. They're going to know the, the, um, the, the, the neurologists. They're going, to, they're going to know what the programs are about. And because they're in the field and their job is to basically talk with you and people like you, help you figure out a plan and then help you execute the plan by finding these other players, they can tell you who's good and who's not. So you're so that you're not you know saying to yourself oh well you know I really need some help at home so what do I do in the old days the, it was like what do I do do I go in the yellow pages you know and now it's like what do I what can I find on Google well that's that's kind of not the best way to find out necessarily who the best people are in your area so you want to be talking to those professionals now that geriatric care manager unless you have long term care insurance is going to charge you for that and that's not going to be covered by your insurance but I'm telling you those are the best dollars you are ever going to spend um, if you're going through memory loss issues are the dollars you spend on that geriatric care manager now you want to figure out a plan now if Mary is in the early has is just having some memory loss issues but your doctor um, is, is telling you that this may be a, a symptom of something that's going to be getting worse in the future, then one of the issues, if you're Frank and Mary, that you need to figure out is how, how do you prepare in case at some point in the future um, Mary needs more care or Mary needs assistance. Now, if, if Mary and Frank want to stay in their house, they've got the assets that I, w I went through. So they've got a house and, and then they've got cash worth about $500,000. Their income is okay for what is happening with them now, but what if they need more money? Well, the only obvious, and they may not be wanting to just spend down that $500,000 right away because that's the only $500,000 they have. They know, that they, and they don't want to run out of money before they die. Nobody wants to run out of money before they die. So the question is, can they have a backup so that they can feel they're not going to get stressed out by, by you know, really dipping into their savings? The best way is their house. If they want to live in their house until they die, then they probably want to take advantage of all the equity that they have in their house uh, in order to take care of some of these problems. Now, there are two ways to do that. Uh, one is a home equity line of credit or a HELOC. Uh, the other is a reverse mortgage. Uh, I, would, I would emphasize that if you have a, a, a problem like Frank and Mary's, you want to explore both of these options. Um, the easiest option is the home equity line of credit. Uh, because you're just going to be able to go kind of you know walk into a walk into a, your local bank and they're going to be able to tell you about that the reverse mortgage typically is not offered by local banks so you'll need to reach out to a person uh, who works with the reverse mortgage company so you want to be kind of talking about that but I'm going to talk about that a little bit more but I also want to mention at, at this this may be the point before you decide whether you're going to you know stay in your home until you die where you want to decide whether you want to look at other options. You may want to look at, is, do you, is the house that you have, the house where you raised your kids, and it's a terrific house and you've got great memories, but it's just too big. It's just too big. So the question is, do you want to shrink? Do you want to get out of that house, get into a smaller house, get into a condominium, get into something that doesn't have stairs, something where you're not going to have as much yard maintenance? This may be the time to think about that. And what that will do also, it, or what it may very well do, is it will increase Frank and Mary's savings because you're probably going to be able to buy something for less than, what it's, than the money you're going to make by selling the house that you have now with no mortgage. So this is really the time to think about that or to decide whether, given Mary's situation, you want to look at assisted living communities. Assisted living communities that are, in, 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 you know, when my mother died in 1991, th this concept of assisted living didn't exist, right? Remember, the, remember back when those were really a novelty and now they're like everywhere and there are more being built all the time? So you may want to shop and see in many of these assisted living communities, most of the new ones now also have a memory care community within them so that if Frank and Mary are there, and Mary really starts experiencing problems, she can either move to the memory care unit, <clears throat> and sometimes that's kind of an expensive option because now you're having to pay for two rents, uh, or in many of these places you can also, the, the, the person who has um, uh, memory problems can participate in the programs that occur in the memory unit. 
They're more kind of specialized programs really designed for people who have memory problems during the day, but then go back, in this case to Frank, go back to Frank at night so you can kind of get the best of both worlds. So you may want to at least explore those. And when you're exploring those, don't start off by saying, oh, I could never afford this. Oh, I could never afford this. What you want to do is you want to check them out and see whether they could meet your needs either now or in the future. Because once again, one of the nice things about all this is you're not in a hurry, right? These are the early stages of, of memory problems. You're not in a hurry. So check them out, get a sense of the price, and then really sit down and compare what it would cost you in the assisted living versus what it's now costing you. Oftentimes people, once they do those numbers and they realize that suddenly in assisted living, they've got no food bills because the meals are all there, their transportation costs are much lower, of course their taxes and their insurance all you know, went away, right? And oftentimes you'll find when you compare all of that, that, that the, 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 the drain on your savings for the rest of your life is, is pretty comparable to, whether, to if you stay at home. Finally, you should be aware that if you are in an assisted living community and it turns out that in this case Mary needs a lot of care because it can be certified by her doctor or nurse or social worker um, that she needs that care because her memory is really, is, 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 has gotten worse and she needs pretty regular supervision, then the assisted living payments, the monthly payments, could become tax deductible. So in terms of, so in terms of saving Frank's money, Frank's tax deferred money, his IRA, for a rainy day, he may want to save that until at some point in the future Mary needs this additional care, at which point if they're living in the uh, assisted living community, the payments for that care may become tax deductible. So he's using his tax, his IRA money and using 100, 100 cents on the dollar. Finally, I want to go back to that, the whole HELOC versus reverse mortgage question. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Once again, either one of these is basically a credit card that you're getting uh, that is secured by a, by, your, by a mortgage on your home. So in the case of a HELOC, you're going to the bank and you're saying, okay, I want, a, you know, I want, a, I want, a, I want a, an, a line of credit. And if you get that line of credit, it's going to be, a, you're going to get a, you're going to sign a line of credit promissory note that's going to be secured by the mortgage. And the rules are going to be that as long as you don't use the line of credit, um, you're not paying any interest on it. If you do pull out some of the money from the line of credit, at that point, you start paying interest. Uh, from then on in, you're going to owe a monthly payment regarding the amount that you have borrowed. That's number one. Number two, um, the HELOCs typically have a period of time during which you can exercise this line of credit option. It's usually between five and ten years. After that, though, the amount that you owe then needs to get paid back to the bank uh, on a self-amortizing basis. The basis just like a regular mortgage where you're paying principal and interest payments until all the payments are done. Usually that period of self-amortization is fairly short, like, a, like another 10 years. What that ends up meaning is that if you've pulled out a lot of the money out of the line of credit, <clears throat> once it converts so that it becomes self-amortizing, the payments you have to make are extremely high. So that may be a consideration for you when you're considering this. The other consideration and the reason why you want to check this out with your bank is that ever since the, the uh, financial collapse a little over 10 years ago, um, banks have been more constrained about using these um, and giving the money out and unless the senior can demonstrate that their income is sufficient not just to pay the interest every month but to pay this self-amortizing piece that would occur after that 10-year period. So Frank and Mary may find in this case that if their only income is from Social Security, they can't get a, a, a HELOC or they can't get one um, for regarding a substantial uh, percentage of the value of their house. So that may not be on the table. The other option is the reverse mortgage. A reverse mortgage is the same as a HELOC. It is a promissory note, a promise that you give to this bank secured by a line of credit. Just like the HELOC, if you haven't borrowed any money, you don't start paying interest. The difference though is that once you have started borrowing money, while interest accrues on that money every month, if you can't pay it, you don't have to. The, the interest, if you don't pay it, simply gets added at the end of that month to the principal, thereby increasing the principal by a tiny amount. 
so that the following month, the, 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 the payment goes up by a tiny amount. So in either case, you want to figure, Frank and Mary need to figure out, and the earlier the better, whether they have this ability to tap into their home to provide equity, and if so, for how much. So, so that's some, and that's something that, once again, you want to be considering early. Now, you want to learn early also about the programs that are available when you're in this kind of early memory loss situation. There are a lot of them. Uh, if you go talk to your ASAP, you're going to find, about, find out about ECOP, um, the Enhanced Community Options Program, uh, which is a statewide program that is offered through the, these, these ASAPs. So it will be offered through Springwell and through uh, Elder Services of Cape Cod and the Islands that will provide you with typically up to six to ten hours of, of assistance at home, not, not with, with, really with the activities of daily living, not with you know, helping you, go, you know, use the bathroom or shower, but with things like shopping or meals prep or doing a lot of the, 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 the things that Frank and Mary may decide at this point, they really need to have done, <clears throat> among other things, because Frank needs to be with Mary. Uh, and perhaps Frank you know, can't get out of the house or doesn't want to be doing these other things, right? So you may want to be talking to these folks about that, those programs, as opposed to the, the mass health programs, which are asset-based. In these ca this case, you can qualify for these no matter what your assets. Frank and Mary could qualify for these programs with their current assets and income. There's a small copay based on your income. So you want to look at that. You also want to look at what other programs are available. There are, and, and you want to go look. And, and, and your, the, 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 your geriatric care manager is going to be able to tell you this, but especially the folks from the senior center are going to be able to tell you. And this is going to be, these are going to be very local. There's a great program in Marlboro, Hudson, and Northboro now called Daybreak, a program through which if you have dementia, you can go to the program for one or two or three days a week. Um, and participate in the program. It's great in terms of your caregiver because the caregiver then has time during the day, typically about four hours, uh, to get other stuff done or just to go home and take a nap. For the, pro for the program participants, it's great because everybody there has memory issues and therefore the memory, is memory isn't like an embarrassment. It's just kind of like part of the program. So, so that, that's a great program. There are also standalone programs. There's a terrific one on Martha's Vineyard. Um, call, called the Center for Living uh, that offers program, this kind of program assistance all day, four out of five days during the week. It's a wonderful program. They offer lunch. Uh, in, in that particular program, you can get um, 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 Elder Services of Cape Cod and the Islands <clears throat> excuse me, to actually assist with the cost if you meet certain mass health criteria. I happen to be, uh, um, our firm is general counsel to, to, to the Center for Living. I know they're lo also looking at scholarship programs for people who really can't, af can't afford those payments. So there are a lot of, the point is don't say no to yourself. Don't assume that these programs aren't available. If there's no program, invent one. I know a program that, that exists, it's a, a so-called memory cafe that exists in Hopkinton that happened because I remember speaking to a woman once when I was in Hopkinton who decided her, her husband had gone through this she, she saw the real need and she just started a program. And it's just like this wonderful program. So you wanna look at that and you wanna know from, your, from the senior center, et cetera, about any caregiver programs that might be in the, in the area. Finally, if you're getting to mid to late stage, so, so Mary is really having pretty serious um, memory problems, you may wanna consider trying to qualify for the so-called frail elder waiver, a program through which Mass Health will pay for assistance for Mary in the home for up to 40 hours a week, so it's a lot of care. It only works, <clears throat> this isn't 24 seven care, so it only works if there's someone like Frank who's providing, who's really there, but just needs this kind of assistance during the day. If Mary qualifies because she needs constant supervision, then the question is how, how Frank would qualify. In this case, given Frank's assets, Frank and Mary could qualify for this program. Because as far as the program is concerned, you can own the home no matter what the value. Um, Frank can have other assets of up to, actually this figure is incorrect. The, the figure is now, it went up this year, $137,400. And Frank can have unlimited income. So, so, so Mary could literally transfer all of her assets to Frank the day before they applied for that program. Frank could keep, say, $100,000 in cash or cash equivalent assets, use the rest of the money to buy an annuity, 
as long as that annuity calls for equal monthly payments over a term that is shorter than his life expectancy, at that time, the purchase of that annuity in any amount is a legitimate conversion from a countable asset to a non-countable income stream. The day after Frank buys the annuity, Mary qualifies for Mass Health. Now, this program is a little more complicated. This is one of the reasons why people will talk to lawyers at this point, because they'll want to make sure they've gotten the assets correctly distributed. So you want to talk to your lawyer at, at that point. But the point is this, is, this doesn't have to be done ahead of time. This can be done the day before Mary needs to, or wants to qualify for this program. So in general, um, and, and by the way, for, in order to, if, you, if Mary qualifies for the program, uh, she'll pay no copay on this if her income is less than $2,543 per month, and that number changes every year too. So the bottom line for all of this is, if you've got memory issues, once again, the nice thing about having a memory issue is it doesn't just show up all of a sudden. It doesn't just show up all of a sudden. You know you're having some problems. You have plenty of time to plan. You know that it's not cancer. You know it's not back pain. There are, you, you need to be adjusting to the fact that you're going to be having more memory problems or that your spouse is and just figuring out a path to get there so that you can live your life until you die. I, ideally be buried in the backyard, but at least be buried having had a happy life. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation. If you've got any questions, uh, you can contact me. Uh, you can also go to our Facebook page, uh, Elder Law Frank and Mary, uh, to, to, not our Facebook page, but our YouTube channel, Elder Law Frank and Mary, to watch this show over again. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll talk to you again next month. Thank you very much.